years. And then um, there are some very substantial increases in permanent legal immigration. That's the green card. So over the next decade, it looks like legal immigration, permanent immigration, excluding the legalization provisions for the 11 million illegals, legal immigration will go from about 1 million a year to about 2 million a year. And again, that's legal permanent immigration, um, guest uh, not guest workers. Then there are some substantial increases in the number of guest workers allowed in, both skilled and unskilled. And the legal immigration provisions um, accelerate family immigration and also increase unskilled and skilled immigration. So um, there's these big increases in permanent and uh, temporary uh, immigration. There's the amnesty, and then there's a promise of future enforcement. So where do, where does this bill? I know there's been a lot of debate about this. Where does the bill stand uh, as of today? Right, it's very complex, as I'm sure you might imagine. Um, it's uh, it's longer than the New Testament. It has significantly <laughs> more words. <laughs> Somebody's weighed it, and uh, they say it weighs 24 pounds. Um, so. Uh, it's, it's even longer than Dostoevsky's uh, Crime and Punishment. So it's wow. quite a document, well over 1,000 pages. Um, and it, uh, it's now before the full Senate, or as we say, on the Senate floor. It is uh, going through the amendment process. Um, people can submit amendments, and then those things, there's a series of procedures. So they're debating it. When the amendments are all done, and there's some debate about how those amendments are going to be uh, voted on. Um, so amendments, to remind your listeners, are just changes to the bill. You can change every aspect of the bill or only a tiny part of the bill. Anyway, um, most of the amendments focusing are focused on trying to make the bill stronger in enforcement, um, and they'll probably all be defeated and make uh, the legalization contingent or dependent upon meeting certain enforcement goals, but that'll all probably be defeated as well. Um, and then the whole Senate has to vote, and then we have this interesting procedural thing in the Senate called cloture. And although it only takes a majority of votes to pass a bill, you need 60 votes, not 60 percent, but actually 60 votes to end the debate on the bill so that then you can have the vote. vote. And that will be the big hurdle, because once you get cloture, then you get the bill will pass, because um, the Democrats, virtually all the Democrats will vote for it, and the four Republicans on the Gang of Eight will definitely vote for it, so it will pass, because the Democrats have a majority anyway. Um, but will they get cloture? Most people thought and still think that it will, but it's no foregone conclusion. It, it may not get cloture. Um, in some sense, the short answer is whether it will get that depends on your listeners. If they like the bill and they call and say, yes, this is what we want, then senators, particularly Republicans, will vote for it. And if they call their senators every day in every way and say, no, this is not what we want, then they probably won't. I mean, in some sense, it, you know, we get to some extent what we want in democracy or what we push hardest for. And um, there's a tremendous amount of big money, uh, all the ethnic advocacy groups, most of the leadership, not necessarily the members, but the leadership of the t most major church groups, the, um, the leadership, not necessarily the members, but the leadership of every major union, um, the editorial pages of every major newspaper, um, an enormous number of big businesses ranging from agribusinesses to hotels and restaurants, uh, to construction companies to and their lobbyists in Washington are spending tens of millions of dollars. One of the main goals has been to make sure that conservatives, uh, while they don't like it, just aren't too vocal. And so one of the things that you know all these ads that Marco Rubio's made and all his appearances on talk radio have done is um, basically to try to make sure people talk radio doesn't um, rise up and defeat the bill like they did in 2006 and 2007. I, I was wondering, too, why um, the whole enforcement of the border, securing the border, wasn't more at the front of this. He said five years down the, down the line, and everybody's like, no, we need to, we need to secure our borders. I don't know why that wasn't at the top right, of the list, and that's working. so controversial, or what? Right. I mean, you could say that we're going to enforce the law first, and then come back and decide whether how, you know, how big an amnesty we want if we want one at all. But that would mean that some illegal immigrants have to go home, 
and and the Democrats basically don't want any illegal immigrants to go home, particularly any illegal immigrants who haven't committed a violent felony. If you're a drunk driver, even those people, they should all stay in the view of the Democrats. And, and in, in fairness, in their view of Marco Rubio, he feels that all the illegal immigrants should stay. So basically, you only have to have lived here for a little over a year to qualify. So if you came two years ago, you're in, you get you get legal status immediately and eventual citizenship. Um, so I think that um, that's the main reason they don't want to have enforcement first and then come back, is illegal, some illegal immigrants would have to go home because they'd get caught up in the enforcement. And and the Democrats and the gang uh, and the four Republicans who support the bill uh, don't uh, don't want that. Steve, as you stand back and look at the whole bill, are there parts of it that you think on balance are pretty good? And are there parts of it that on balance you think are really pretty bad? Can you just point us the positive and the negative of this this complex bill? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I'm going to be completely honest with you. It's hard for me to find anything positive in the bill. Yeah. I don't even like the way they have the amnesty. It's completely dishonest because they pretend like, well, it'll be 13 years before they have citizenship. But that's not the thing that matters. The only thing that matters is that folks here all get to stay, all get to have legal status, all get driver's license, all get Social Security numbers, all get travel documents to come to and from the United States. It's essentially a green card, and they're just pretending that it's not by calling it something else. Um, so it's deceptive even on that level. It is, if no enforcement ever takes place, everybody gets to retain those things. Legal status will never be withdrawn. In fact, legal status to move on to the full green card um, is not contingent upon enforcement. And of course, getting citizenship is not contingent upon enforcement. Everything is deceptive. They have a provision in there for taxes that applies to no one. But at least it lets them say, well, we have a provision for back taxes. Even though the way the provision is written, and everyone agrees on this, this isn't really, any, I'm not giving you any inside information. It just says if the IRS has already assessed you for back taxes, and since that doesn't apply to any illegal immigrants, then there's no back taxes. And the English language stuff just basically says you have to sign up for a class. You never have to learn English. But they can at least say there's an English language provision uh, in there. And take the employer verification provision. It doesn't go into effect for five years, and it only ever applies to new hires, the existing workers. Uh, never, never applies to. They, they, you know, you could roll that out slowly, but it only goes in effect five years and only for new hires. If you're illegal and you apply and you don't get it because you've committed a serious crime and so they say, sorry, no legal status, you can just stay in your job, which gets me to another point, the enforcement provisions for all the people presumably who get turned down. Because part of the whole argument for this thing is to weed out the bad apples who are here illegally, right? But if you apply and are turned down, you just get a letter. They never go looking for you. In fact, the way the bill is constructed, the bill has uh, basically confidentiality guarantees. So they're not. They are legally prohibited from using any of the information you gave them in your application, and then if you got turned down, to going out to look for you. So you, they can't use your address or your place of work that you may have provided them um, to, to go out and find you. So even if you're a previously deported illegal alien who's come back, you apply, hoping to slip through the cracks. There's no mechanism to make you leave, and you can just stay in your job because of the way they do the employment verification. Um, there's no they, they dramatically increase the number of guest workers in the United States. Putting aside whether that makes sense, you would need a careful entry exit system to record the arrival and departure people to make sure that the time limits on guest workers have been honored. But this bill explicitly exempts all the land borders, and we think that's where most of those visa overstays occur anyway. People come in across the land border and then never go home, even though they came in on a temporary visa and were supposed to go home. So it exempts the land borders. And under current law, they're supposed to eventually implement one on the land borders. So this is actually a step back in that way. So I think the enforcement provisions are bad. I don't like the way the um, the legalization provisions uh, work, and the dramatic increases in legal immigration in the bill, I mean, it depends on how you look at that, but there's just no evidence of a shortage of workers in the United States, whether we're talking about college graduates or high school dropouts. Just very briefly, 
real wages for workers of all education levels have either stagnated, that means little growth, or actually outright declined, particularly at the bottom end of the labor market. Now, if you had a shortage of workers, as employers always contend, real wages would be rising as employers try desperately to, to, to recruit workers or bid up. Uh, you know, retain the workers that they have. And that's not what's been happening in the U.S. labor market for really the last 25 years. If we look at the fraction of people not working in the United States, I won't give you a lot of statistics, but we're at about 60 million working age people, 16 to 65, not working. Back in 2000, which wasn't so long ago, it was about 41 million. So, we have a situation where we have an enormous number of working age people not working. Workers make less than they used to, and that's across the board, up and down the labor market. So it's very difficult for me to see any compelling argument to add even more workers to the U.S. economy right now. So in short, uh, whether it's the increases in permanent immigration or temporary immigration, whether it's the enforcement or the legalization provisions, I've got to tell you, it's hard for me to be positive about any aspect of the bill now when it okay at, at the end of that if we go back to the to the political question of what's going to happen if it makes its way through the senate does it then go to the house or or yes. or what and and what will happen when this massive bill if it gets out of the senate goes to the house does it die there is there another big fight uh it's another big fight uh will it pass it's hard to say. Um, it, the president does not look that a bill like this with all these flaws could pass the House. But it's unclear. Um, what might happen, though, what your listeners have to remember is if the House passes a bill with immigration on it, then it goes uh, to, into what's called conference, where they try to work out the differences between the two. And um, it depends on what happens in that conference. Because then if it comes back to the House and Senate, if most of the Democrats in the Senate, of course, vote for it, it'll pass the Senate. And if it goes to the House, all the Democrats in the House can be expected to, to vote for it. And at the same time, a few Republicans will vote for it, so it might pass. In other words, even though the overwhelming majority of Republicans don't want it, it might, if it comes back from conference, it might pass. And this is the concern, and that's why, you know, there's a... Um, there is assurances that they've gotten, or at least that he's given from Bonner, Boehner, Secretary Boehner, uh, I'm sorry, um, Speaker Boehner, that he will not push a bill that does not enjoy majority support among the Republicans. They refer to this as the Haster rule. So at present, it doesn't seem, though we'll see, that a bill like this could pass the House. We're talking with Dr. Stephen Camerata. He's the director of research for the Center for Immigration Studies in Washington, D.C. Uh, Stephen, tell us, uh, first of all, just say a word about the center itself. Tell us where we can find you on the Internet. And if our listeners, if they want to make their voice heard now during this debate, what should they do? Well, I mean, um, the center is, is uh, just a think tank. Um, we're, we're at cis.org. All of our research is there, CIS, like Center for Immigration Studies, uh, .org. Everything's there, everything you can download for free. There's no charge. Um, and you can see many of our concerns with this bill in general. If you really wanted to be involved, there are groups that actively work to lower the level of immigration, to see that the laws enforce and are working against this bill. Probably the most effective one is one called Numbers USA, just like it sounds, Numbers, and then USA.com. And you can sign up for their free emails. Again, they may ask you for donations, but you don't have to give them anything. In other words, it's a, it's a free service, and they keep you up to date and tell you who to call, when to call, and they provide you faxes and emails you can send. So NumbersUSA.com is like the leader in the fight to try to mobilize uh, public opinion against this thing, get the word out. So if that's something you're interested in uh, doing, then, uh, then you know, they would be the people to contact. And if you, want, if you want the bill to pass, there are so many groups working for this bill, it, uh, you know, it'd be easy to find them. Let me ask you a question about border security. Um, because in the debate, sometimes you just hear it said, you hear it framed this way, well, we, quote, all want border security, but it would take so long and it would cost so much money that it really can't be done. 
is there a way to effectively secure the borders of the United States so we don't have the flood tide of illegal immigration? Well, let's, let's start in saying yes, but. 